welcome to episode 20 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I am the dyer behind Paper Crane Yarns. I also own a LYS, a local yarn store, which is where I am coming to you from. I am located in central Alabama and my store is also called Paper Crane Yarns. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, my website, here on YouTube, all those places as Paper Crane Yarns. Um, so my website is papercraneyarns.com. So now that I've said the phrase Paper Crane Yarns a hundred times in 30 seconds, <laughs> uh, hi, how are, how are you guys? How have you been doing? I haven't been here in a while. Um, today is August 17th, 2022. It's actually my three year wedding anniversary. So I'm trying to <laughs> keep this quick um, ish. I don't expect that today. I have so much to show you. I haven't recorded in two months. That's what YouTube says. I'm not sure when exactly I last recorded an episode, but it has definitely been a hot minute. <laughs> it's been a while. I have had quite a, a lot going on, as you may know if you've been following along or if you are familiar with my Instagram or what have you, but I just had a baby two weeks ago. So I've definitely been gone a while. I'm My shop has been closed now for a couple weeks. Um, I'm still doing online sales and shipping out orders, but I haven't physically sewn anything or dyed yarn or like I said, even been in my shop for about two and a half weeks. And it's been this huge time warp where it feels like it's been so much longer than that. But yeah, it, it's nice to be physically here today. I'm not reopening yet. I'm still trying to figure out the details behind that, but I have a, a two week old at home. So I don't, you know, I would rather be spending time with her. So like I said, I have a ton to show you today. I have a lot of finished objects and some yarn that I purchased. Um, so I guess let's get started. So my first one I'm wearing, um, this is one of the three Love Note sweaters I'm going to show you today. And um, let's see, it's knit out of Lambstring Yarns, their Click Beetle lace mohair. Um, this is a, a silk mohair and I bought this from India Untangled of 2021. So last year when I went to India Untangled and, and Rhinebeck, I picked up two skeins of this because it's just gorgeous. I didn't find anything to accompany it that weekend, so uh, you may remember from a long time ago, I talked about how I dyed some merino singles, some fingering weight skeins to match this Click Beetle colorway. So um, I would say they were pretty similar, um, and this is how they look knit together. So I really adore this sweater. This is the Tin Can Knits uh, pattern love note that has a million projects and you've likely seen before, but I had yet to knit one until now. Um, like I said, I, I knit three of them in like two weeks. So I totally understand the love for this pattern now and I have every intention to make more. In fact, I'm about to cast on another one, which I'll talk about later. This is my, uh, my nice brown red version. I love the lace yoke pattern. I finally got some real lighting for my, my videos and I have a new camera I'll be using at some point with a microphone. So pardon my progress as I figure out the, the situation, with, like I said, with the lighting and, and what have you. So if it gets kind of blown out, sorry about that in advance. Um, I think you can see the depth of color a little bit better from farther away. Up close it kind of, you lose some of it, but hopefully you could at least see the, the detail of the lace. I really, really love everything about this pattern. So I knit a size small, which gave me um, probably, a, I mean, quite a bit of positive ease. And I knit uh, full length sleeves. I, the pattern calls for the sleeve to end probably about here, but um, I'm, I'm definitely a full length sleeve kind of person, if not the sleeve quite long, but I decided to have it cut off right at um, my, my wrist 
because of I like the small balloon sleeve effect. So, and of course, because it's held double, the, the lace mohair and the merino singles, it's extremely soft and very lightweight, um, super drapey, and all of those good, happy things about a nice lightweight sweater. This pattern called for some provisional, uh, a provisional cast on here at the neck. And so you actually knit the sweater, and it is a paid for pattern, so I won't, I won't talk about specifics, but if, if you have ever knit a provisional cast on, or you've been afraid to try it, or you're not sure about it, I think you should definitely give it a go. I was a little bit apprehensive the first time I did one, and I think I talked about it in my last episode because I, I had to do it for my Reagan cardigan by Isabel Kramer. And um, turns out I really love that cast on. It's very simple and I like the, the payoff in the end. So with this sweater, the, the purpose of it is you actually provisionally cast on for the yoke. And then at the end, you pick up a, a, your, your cast on and you knit the neckline. And so the purpose being you can kind of tailor the way that this sits on your shoulders depending on um, how tightly you knit the neckline or how many rows you put in. So, big fan. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I just, I really love the sweater. And um, so everything I'm saying about this one, I guess, you know, applies for the other two, except for I have one that I knit out of a different yarn. So I, again, I highly, highly recommend this pattern. Um, so the next one that I will show you is my baby love note. This is the first one that I knit, second one I knit. Now I don't remember. I think it was the first one. Here it is, my teeny tiny love note. This is the smallest size. Um, I don't have the pattern in front of me and it's been a, uh, a couple weeks since I knit it. So now I don't remember what that range is from, but I'm going to guess something like three to six months. It might be zero to three months, but I don't see this fitting since I have a, a zero month baby, a, a newborn. Um, this definitely would not fit her. So I'm gonna say this would probably be better for a three to six month if not older um, child. I mean, it does have positive ease, so she'll probably get to wear this for a long time. But yes, this is my teeny tiny love note. And the colorway, so these are my hand dyed yarns. And my, my daughter's name is Ara. This, this is my Ara colorway. So my the I used a 75-25 merino nylon fingering, um, held double with a lace mohair, um, a silk mohair weight and they are both in my Aura colorway and I, I'm i quite sure that the light is blowing it out a, a good bit because it's a nice pastel color. Um, yes, <laughs> it's so soft and fuzzy. I hope you can kind of see the, the fluff behind it perhaps. Um, both of these sweaters have that and you can see it a little bit better I think with this light color. But it is like a, a peachy sort of salmon base with some kind of more neon peach and periwinkle um, variega variegation and speckles. But yes, <laughs> it's so cute. I can't wait to see her in this. Um, she now has two hand knit sweaters and she can't fit either of them, uh, which is okay because it's definitely still 100 degrees here in Alabama. But by the time she's big enough to fit them, it should be nice and cool outside so they will serve their purpose. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, so speaking of the one I wanted to, I want to cast on, I do still have all of the yarn left that I showed you. So this only took about, I think this only took about one skein of the Lambstrings silk mohair. Um, I have most of my second skein left and it only took about one skein of the Merino single that I dyed. So I have most of that skein left too. I think I have about 75% of both of those left. So it's more than enough to make another one of these. And I am going to probably cast on this week um, for this same colorway in this size so my daughter and I can match. <laughs> and I'm super excited. This is a very fast knit because you're using um, kind of a large gauge needle for, uh, for a fingering weight yarn. Um, so you do definitely get a, like a, a larger gauge in the fabric. It, it's, 
I think that really lends itself to the drapiness and the lightweight like airiness of this pattern, which really matches the, the lace very well. So yeah, super quick knit. This I think I did in a day or two. Um, and this full size took me again, like maybe two or three days. So if you need a quick project, Love Note is your friend. <laughs> So my third love note is just a bit different. Um, this is, I think, the first one I intended on knitting, and I will take a moment to swap my sweaters and put this one on so we can see it, but first I'm going to talk a little bit about the yarn. Um, so I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool this year back in May, I guess that was May. I only walked away with um, one yarn, I got a couple skeins, the sweater quantity of it, and my intention was to knit a love note because they 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 got me with their booth sample. This is Yarn Hero is is the name of the of the yarn company. <laughs> um, so Yarn Hero and this is their. I might just have to put the I might have to put the name of it just down below, um, or I'll try to put it on the screen if I remember. But it is a DK weight and it's completely slipping my mind now, but I am in love with this this yarn company. I wish you could feel how wonderful this yarn is. It's 100% wool, and you can see it has all this beautiful marled effect um, in in the, the skein itself, so you get some beautiful kind of fading um, without having to do anything. I, I didn't even alternate skeins because I trusted the way that these skeins um, even though they, each skein kind of looked fairly different, sort of like um, if you're familiar with the spin cycle, there can be a lot of variety in each of those skeins. But I didn't, I wasn't apprehensive about holding, uh, not switching yarns. And I also didn't swap for this one because I, I mean, that's just not, I probably should, I just didn't. I will say with this sweater, I don't see a problem, probably because there's so much variegation and different um, depths of shade so it's if it was a tonal a solid tonal I probably would have spent the time to alternate but um, anyway I, I I haven't alternated skeins for any of these projects so so yes this is a DK weight so I didn't hold it double of course um, I didn't gauge swatch what you'll find out about me if you don't already know is I I skip a lot of important steps and I I wink it and I hope for the best and um, it hasn't failed me so far for the most part. So unfortunately, I, I'm not learning any better. <laughs> so of course, this one does look um, a little bit different from this. The lace, when I put it on, maybe you'll see it, but you don't see the lace quite as intricately, at least in my opinion. But it has all of that great positive ease. I knit this one in the same size as this one. And because I didn't and I don't gauge swatch, um, they are a little bit different. I would say this one's bigger. Um, let's go ahead and just swap. So here is my Yarn Hero version. And um, it's definitely, uh, it's a very lightweight feeling sweater. I, I want to say I purchased three or four skeins. Um, I'll link to my Ravelry page below. And I have an entire skein left, essentially. I only used a little bit of it, probably to finish the sleeve. Um, so it's very lightweight, but it's it's certainly quite warm. And so yeah, so you can see kind of what I mean where you lose a little bit of the detail in the lace, but it's certainly still there. And the way that the yarn played out, it got kind of highlighted by some of the lighter parts of the yarn. So since the lighting is off, I can kind of show you probably a little bit better the way that this yarn knits up and all of the different beautiful colors. So as I was saying, they had a booth sample of this same yarn uh, in a love note, same colorway and everything. So I was really sold on replicating their project. Not quite sure what to do with the rest of the yarn. Um, it's DK weight, as I mentioned. I have most of the skein left, and I would really love to make something beautiful with it. Or, you know, perhaps save this for a colorwork detail in a DK weight sweater. I did also buy a, from them, they had Millen's uh, skeins 
that they sold by the weight. They would weigh it when you were checking out and I got a beautiful um, skein that looks like it's like kind of just some beautiful greens and I think oranges and reds perhaps and I bought it for color work so maybe I'll save this and use it as a color work accent as well. So that was three finished objects out of the way and I just counted I think I have three more to show. So this next one is very special. Let me see which way is the right side. I believe this is the right side. Um, okay, so the yarn is very dark. Might be hard to see. I think you can probably see the detail behind, uh, with, the, with the wall behind the lace. But this is the silver leaf pattern by, you know, I just, uh, I just looked at this today and I forget. So it will be below and perhaps on the screen. But this is a very popular shawl pattern. Again, it's silver leaf. You've likely come across it on Ravelry. Um, and uh, it's really, really gorgeous. And this was also a very quick knit. This only took a couple of days. Um, I knit this right, I think maybe the last week of my pregnancy. And I, my baby was born on her due date. <laughs> So I went to 40 weeks fully. So I think 39 weeks, I uh, was pretty miserable, was not wanting to do much. So I did, I did essentially only knit that week. Um, I was on bed rest, self-diagnosed, self-prescribed bed rest. So this, this was a, a quick knit for sure. And the yarn is also from India Untangled last year. This is from a, a small family owned farm that goes by um, Idlewild and I will have details about them below. I was really excited to purchase this yarn from them. They mostly do things like buttons, I think mostly clay and perhaps some wood buttons and when I saw their booth at, at India Untangled I wasn't looking for buttons so I skipped them until I was on my way out to leave for the day and I noticed they had baskets of beautiful like undyed uh, skeins of yarn down at the bottom which I am always on the hunt for. I love, I mean I'm a, I'm a dyer, I love hand dyed yarns, I love merino and uh, superwash and all of those things but um, I think we can all agree on how special it is when you can find something like like this uh, that has a story and this uh, yarn is actually named after the sheep from whom uh, it came, and that sheep's name was Pepper, so I call this my Pepper shawl. And uh, my, I talk about it so much, and I'm so in love with it that my husband even knows the name of the sheep because I've said it so many times. And uh, yes, it's just gorgeous. So I had three skeins of, of this, and each skein was about 90 grams, I think is what it was estimated. I didn't weigh them, but that's what the, her card said. And um, it was classified as a sport weight. I don't remember the yardage, but yeah, about 90 grams. It was a sport weight. This pattern calls for sport weight yarn. So um, I figured I would have enough. I was a little bit worried when I was knitting the initial section with, the, with all of the garter and these um, sort of yarn over sections. I was actually thinking I was going to run out before I could even finish the uh, lace pattern, but I didn't. I actually have some left over, so I'm excited about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is a very, um, very special to me. You can kind of see when I hold it up close. So from here, it looks like a deep sort of chocolate brown, but up close, you can see those those gray hairs in there, and that's because this was part of Pepper's um, fleece when they were older. So they, so Idlewild had some skeins of purely just a deep chocolate brown, very stunning yarn, um, even had a softer hand. And that was from Pepper's first couple of shearings um, when they were younger. And then they had this one indicates that it was the older um, wool. So to me, it's really special. All of those, those gray fibers um, kind of showing Pepper's life and history and just, you know, sentimental, sweet things like that, that as a, a likely knitter or crocheter or person who loves fiber yourself, you probably understand um, just how special that really is. 
So yes, really, really beautiful. I love the length of, um, of the shawl. So one of this one one side is sort of longer than the other as far as the point goes. So it ends right here, and you can see there's some beautiful garter stitch in there um, for a border. And this blocked out really really nicely. So it did grow some, but also it just straightened out perfectly. And and now it's really beautiful on. Um, it might be hard to kind of give you the full effect since I'm wearing a sweater, but I think it's stunning. Um, maybe over like a dress. But uh, the way that it looks, yeah, I definitely think it looks better <laughs> not over the sweater, but it is a really beautiful wrap, a beautiful shawl. It's to me the perfect size. I love how long it is. I often find with shawls like this, um, the, the point that's sort of triangle in the back is usually long enough, but the where you kind of actually wrap it around yourself, I often find is too short. So I'm not really getting to really wrap myself the way that I would like. So if you are somebody who wants sort of like a long triangle shawl, something you can really wrap um, and drape over your shoulders. And I mean, you can kind of see like how much um, extra length there is, then this is the pattern for you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really, really beautiful. And again, it feels special to get to have this and know the story behind the yarn. And of course also wear it in the front and show off the beautiful detail of the, uh, the leaf pattern and yeah, so lots of gorgeous ways to wear this shawl. This might be one of my most favorite shawls to date. Um, I think this shawl and my Calville shawl by Gabriella of Merryweather Knitting, those two have def are definitely my, my favorite shawls that I have and they're going to be hard to beat. Um, I really, I can't wait for it to cool down so I can actually wear this because it is rather warm. So yeah, that's my silver leaf, my fourth finished object. I really just love the, this lace pattern so much and the the texture is beautiful that it's raised and um yeah just just stunning my next finished object is actually another shawl and uh, i actually had this shawl done when i filmed my last episode but i am honestly so sick of it that i forgot about it and didn't talk about it last time it's been done for a while um and for good reason i started this a long time ago um, and honestly, I, I really don't, I hate to say this, but I don't care that this is done. I haven't worn it. I'm, yeah, I'm sure I'll, maybe I'll love it when I, because I haven't looked at it in a long time, but this was my, um, spring sampler shawl by Nordic Yarn Imports. And I knit this out of Sadness Garn Tin Linna, which is a plant-based uh, blend of fibers. It was obviously linen. I think there was bamboo and maybe cotton. Um, and I used five different colors and it's just giant uh, stripes. And when I got to the end, so this should be a point. When I got to the end, um, I was, as I said, so sick of knitting this and I was running out of the yarn so I just did a lot of rapid decreasing and then I did some kind of I don't it's been a while I think I did some kind of um, seaming to bring together because it, it was still on the needles like kind of long so you can kind of see here where I hastily and with no skill um, just brought each side together and uh, grafted them together because I wanted to get this off the needles um, so that I, I didn't cry and throw it away or something ridiculous. It's huge though, and it weighs nothing because it, it's just these, it's like a fingering weight um, plant-based fiber and the gauge is super drapey, you can kind of see that. This is not a project I will ever make again. <laughs> and it's a very, very simple pattern. So if I had knit this perhaps out of some different yarns or, um, I don't know. I, I did used to recommend the pattern and it's not the pattern I'm not recommending and it's not even the yarn. The yarn is nice too, if maybe for like a tank top or some kind of other summery um, garment. 
it's it's really not either of the, those things it's that I got really burned out because it, this is a lot of knitting um, I can't hold it out for you to really see the full gravity of just how much is going on here but it goes on and on and on and it is the easiest pattern in the world there's basically two sections um, the increase and then decrease and so just glad to have it done um, I don't even really know how to wear it since I did the weird grafting thing and so now one end is pointed that where I cast on with you know the couple of stitches and then the other end has the weird round bit um, it's such an awkward shape it's really strange if I if I were to be able to show you the full thing I guess if I just really I mean that's not so bad it's not like it looks awful I think again I think I just got burned out on it so now I'm biased when I look at it but it's been it's been a while since I finished it or even looked at it and now that I'm seeing it again it's a, it's I like it I'm I'm happy to have it I'm not glad to have done it but I'm happy to uh, have it so so yes um, I don't remember the the colorways they were all numerical I'm sure if you went back to one of my earliest episodes you could likely find them if you were interested um, but yes, I just did a five color uh, repeat of these big stripes. Some of the colors on camera probably look the same. Like this is a blush pink and this is more of like a lavender. You can't tell too well here how different they are, but yes, so. Okay, it's growing on me. I like it, I like the finished object as long as I tuck away this weird part that uh, we won't talk about anymore. It's not bad, it's cute. <laughs> I suppose. Now if I did, can figure out how to get it back off. See that was kind of nice um, how effortless this was to throw on. A lot of shawls take, in my experience, and this is probably just a me thing, take a lot of just uh, struggling with them to make them look right and to not have you know big knots in your hair or whatever. Um, so yeah. Okay, this one has some redeeming qualities. But um, this was my longest term whip, I think, so it, it felt good to finish it. I don't remember anything about the needles or, you know, it might have been like 3.5 millimeter, maybe a four. Who knows? Just glad to be done. So for my next one, um, I just have a pair of socks that I don't, I don't believe I had these done in my last episode. Um, I think I've shown one, but not both. So just a, just a pair of socks. These are non superwash wool and linen and this is the Kremka uh, Kremka yarn company who I carry here in my shop um, so I knit these with um, some sample a sample skein that I purchased from them when I was bringing them in for my shop and I really really love this yarn um, so the, the stitches are, are really lovely you can see all the linen fibers come through. It's just a, a tonal. I have four colorways of this in my shop and again you can find those on my website too. But um, I have a friend who knit the red colorway which was beautiful and I knit the green and they're all they're, they're just they're both beautiful. So um, I really love this lazy linen. I want to say it's 85% wool and 15% linen. Um, I don't have it here in front of me. It's on the other side of the store. But I believe it's the same uh, fiber content as Pearl Soho's Linen Quill. And as somebody who has knit with this Lazy Linen and the Pearl Soho, actually, oh, I have seven finished objects. I have one right behind me that I would have completely forgotten about. <laughs> this is the Pearl Soho Linen Quill. And I actually like, so it's quite nice. I think I like the hand of this one better. Maybe. It seems like it's a little bit, I don't know, this would be a good alternative uh, if you, for some reason, can't get your hands on the Pearl Soho Linen Quill, or maybe you are just looking for um, some different colors or what have you, but yes, these are these are excellent. And um, I actually knit these to be my, my labor socks, so I took these to the hospital with me um, when I gave birth to my daughter, and um, I, I wore them after the fact since I spent so much time in bed essentially um, not sleeping didn't get to sleep I didn't sleep for more than 20 minutes in my entire hospital say stay 
Um, but I was kind of just wearing them to be cozy in the in the room, and that was that was really nice. So these are these are special. I, I got to wear these um, so far. I've only worn them in that instance, but um, I guess I haven't even told you really about the sock. I'm sure you are familiar with a basic vanilla sock pattern. That's all this is. It's a stockinette sock, um, a two by two ribbed cuff, um, a heel flap and gusset. Uh, a squared toe, sort of, <laughs> with a Kitchener stitch at the end. So very, very basic sock. But um, now I will say, <laughs> because they are just the wool and linen, they are definitely a bit slippery. So probably not the wisest material to knit my hospital socks out of. Um, Again, I didn't really do a whole lot of walking around, and if I did, I took them off just to be safe, to make sure that I didn't fall, but I didn't fall, so we're good. <laughs> I had a little bit of a, a tragedy right when I started to um, film initially, and it's something really sad that I'm trying not to think about, but it's sitting right in front of me. You may have seen, uh, I think I even showed it in my last episode, but you may have seen this on Instagram or um if you haven't, it's, I have a mug that I purchased from the last fiber uh, vending I did, the last vending I did. There was a, a ceramicist there. She had mugs and yarn bowls and whatnot. The mugs had, have knit stitches on them. And this mug in particular that I got from her has this beautiful orange and sort of like a teal glaze on it. It's stunning. Um, I made myself a cup of coffee and I set it here next to me on this little table and this table collapses so you can fold it and I set it down and it collapsed underneath the weight of the mug. So it's an old table I got from uh, an antique mall and I learned my lesson because the mug fell into the ground and shattered and I'm really sad and I'm trying not to think about it too much because that was my favorite, one of my favorite possessions which, you know, Things come and go, and that's all right. But um, especially when it's something handmade, it's so devastating when something happens to it. So I'm gonna take it home and ask my husband if he'll glue it back together for me. And I won't be able to drink out of it anymore, but I can use it for maybe stitch markers or even a yarn bowl. I'm trying to think positively. But uh, anyway, I had to scramble and find a different mug in the shop so I could drink some coffee. <laughs> So let's talk about this finished object that's behind me. Uh, a couple months ago now, I did knit, as I mentioned, the Reagan cardigan by Isabel Kramer, which if you want to go back to my last episode, episode 19, you can check that out. But I used Pearl Soho Linen Quill in the Pale Mushroom colorway to do so. And it only took me, I had three skeins total. It only took me two skeins um, and some change maybe. So I had most of a skein left and I decided to use it to knit something for my daughter before she was born. This is the Rumple, <laughs> Rumple, the Ruffle Romper and Dress Pattern by Knitting for Olive, and it's so beautiful. I really love it. So it's, it's blocked and everything, so 99% done, but I need to attach a button here. I have not yet done that. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's beautiful. And again, this is the Pale Mushroom colorway. I made the smallest size of the dress version of the pattern, so when you purchase the pattern, you get the romper instructions and the dress instructions. You kind of get four patterns in one because you get a, you get, there's a long sleeve dress and a long, and a long sleeve romper and then a short sleeve version of both. And the romper has, of course, it's got, um, it's like a onesie, so it has snaps down at the bottom. Um, I didn't feel like fooling with the snaps or the buttons, so I decided to make the dress version. And um, I'm glad that I did because since I knit the smallest size, I'm not so sure if it would be the most wonderful feeling as a baby to have something wool and, and linen, you know, brushed right up against your inner leg. I, I can imagine that might not feel great. Now, if this had been like a super wash merino, maybe I would have done that because it'd be a bit smoother, but because this is kind of more of a rustic yarn, something with a little bit I mean, it did soften quite a bit with blocking, but something with a little bit more tooth to it, I think the dress is better for 
for her at this age. Um, but yeah, so really lovely little pattern. Um, the the ruffle so it took a surprisingly long time. I feel like it took me just as long to knit the ruffle as it did the rest of the pattern. Um, and I'm sure that's not true, but it, it did feel that way. And it's probably because you don't pick up and knit the ruffle until the very end. So at that point, you've kind of already knit like a full dress. And then suddenly you have this additional step um, when you felt like you were done. So I'm sure it's more uh, of a mental sort of, um, yeah, so I'm sure that's more of a, in my head than anything. But it, yeah, it's really beautiful. <laughs> There's not much else I can say about it. You, what you see is what you get. It's just a adorable little dress. Um, I think this would be a lovely kind of gift to give to somebody. If I, if I knew somebody who was having a baby, um, to knit them something like this for their baby, because this was not a super quick pattern. There's shaping and everything involved. And like I said, you've got your, your ruffle. And if you were to knit a, a bigger one, of course, it would take longer. So it's not like it's a super quick knit, but it is fairly simple. And I think it's got such a beautiful heirloom quality to it. So yeah, hopefully Ara can keep this and, and cherish it when she's older, which I don't want to think about right now, her getting bigger or older. But inevitably when she is, um, hopefully she can look back and, and cherish this and save it and do, you know, keep using it. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll sew her a doll that can wear it or, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of rambling. I haven't gotten much sleep in three weeks, so I'm amazed that I've made it this far. <laughs> but I, um, yes, highly recommend this lovely pattern. So the last finished object I have to show you, I have uh, talked about it briefly before. Um, this was actually an anniversary present for my husband, so um, this is fitting that today is our anniversary. I, I already gave it to him. I gave it to him when I finished. I couldn't resist. I couldn't save it. I think it was like a month ago I gave it to him. But this is from the Star Wars Knitting the Galaxy uh, book that's full of beautiful, awesome, amazing patterns. Um, this is by Tannis Gray, and it features other uh, designers in it. Like, I know Tristan from uh, Dragon Horde Yarns. She has a, I, I believe she has, like, a Princess Leia pattern in here. Um, yep, yeah, there's there's different different designers in this book, but it's really awesome. Uh, my husband and I, we do, we do Star Wars cosplay, and our house is, like, 50% um, cottage, you know, house plants, and teapots and all of that and 50% like Star Wars armor and art and so we have sort of we have an eclectic mix I think but um so I knew this would be a a perfect gift for him his favorite his favorite character from the movies at least we won't even get into um the expanded universe or the books or anything like that but in the movies his favorite character is Palpatine and so I knit him the Chancellor Palpatine scarf. And I'm trying to find it. This is amazing content. <laughs> um, so yeah, the Chancellor Palpatine scarf. And I even used the yarn that, that the designer, which I think this one was a Tannis Gray pattern. Yep, yeah, Tannis Gray. So I used the same yarn and um, It's a cable knit scarf. The, the book says that um, it's worked flat the long way to mimic the silken woven fabric of Chancellor Palpatine, Palpatine's over tunic. Um, so that's kind of the, the how it ties into Palpatine. It's the cables look a lot like um, you might be able to see here, but oh, hopefully you can kind of get some of that detail. But it's supposed to look a little bit like that, and it kind of does. Um, the color, I think, more so reflects like the Palpatine quality of, of the project. But um, this was definitely an adventure to knit. Let me take it out, sort of, and show you a little bit better. So again, this is uh, the same yarn called for in that pattern. It's Keisha, K-A-T-I-A. I'm assuming Keisha. Um, I could be saying that wrong, but it's their Concept Merino, and this is the tweed variety. So I was trying to get the exact yarn and colorway from the sample knit. I wasn't able to get the same colorway, which was 
like a red and black. It had that beautiful shaded. Actually, it looks a lot like this was how the sample knit um, appeared. And I really wanted to find that, but I could not find it from a US retailer. I would have had to bring it in and it seems like it's either discontinued that colorway or it hasn't been manufactured in a while because you can really only find it. Um, again, all of the US suppliers are basically out of stock. I checked everywhere and um, I was only able to find it from other countries and so the, it wouldn't have been reasonable to bring that in um, for like the shipping cost and also I, I really, I mean, yeah, it just wouldn't have been reasonable. So I went with this shade. I think this is 500 red or it's 501 red, I believe, but it's the tweed variety and I, I don't know why it's called that other than maybe that it just has variegation so you kind of get speckles of other colors. There's no actual tweed in this yarn, but it's a merino and cotton blend. So the hand, it's really very soft. My husband is extremely sensitive. He does not like, I think this would be his limit. Even this he finds scratchy and to me this is like the softest material. Um, so I thought maybe getting something with a blend of merino, which is obviously a soft wool, and then cotton would do well for him. And he tried it on and he really enjoys it. So um, perhaps this could work for you or somebody that you love if they have a sensitivity to wool. Um, this might be good for them. So yeah, um, I think it will be a failure to try to show you the cable. Let me turn off my lights for a moment. Okay, now I can kind of hold it up and show you. Um, so a little bit about this pattern. This is knit lengthwise. And even though when I read to you that excerpt, it says, th it says so, I did not um, realize that um, when I decided to knit this, and it wasn't until I was casting on that I realized you have to cast on over 400 stitches. So that was fun. <clears throat> so you cast on over 400 stitches. Um, I actually had to buy a new cable for my Haya Haya interchangeable set. Um, I think it was 60 inches or so. It was quite long and the, the sets don't automatically come with cables that long, so I had to buy one just so I could do this project. And um, I mean, yeah, it was huge. It was about the length of this scarf. So quite long, um, not, yeah. I, I attempted to initially cast on on my largest, whichever largest um, cable I had um, that you would normally use for like a sweater in the round, but you really can't. So if you plan to knit this, make sure you have a very, very long cable. The weight of the yarn with the the cable pattern and I had a stitch marker between every single repeat and I think each repeat is only eight stitches or maybe 12 stitches regardless I had tons and tons of um, stitch markers on here and uh, it just was way too much for a shorter cable so yes um, enough rambling about that I'm so happy to have finished this it was uh, a slog as some people might say it was quite a bit um, this is my first like all over cable pattern and you know as much as I love it and I see it and I think it's beautiful I almost feel like the cable gets sort of lost in the yarn so I, that's a little disappointing um, yeah let me know what you think uh, about th this pairing it is beautiful and I, it's definitely not I mean you can see it and probably better without the lighting but I just need somebody to tell me that this was worth my time because this was a lot of effort and I didn't use a cable needle. I never have. Uh, I used a DPN. That was my gift to him and my last finished object to show you. It's quite long. So this is, a, I mean, it is a, a really wonderful um, pattern. I might even borrow this from him sometimes. So that is that. Um, I have one work in progress I can show you. Sorry if the camera looks totally different now. I kicked the tripod and there's no telling where we are versus where we were. Um, so my work in progress. This, I showed the very beginnings of this on my last podcast and um, I definitely put it down and picked it back up. So I think when I last showed it, I really only had a little bit of the bottom. So this is the 
let's let's start from the beginning, shall we? This is the Getaway Cardigan by Alicia Plummer, and this is one of her newest patterns. Um, it, it she called for Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is their worsted, like their their heavier weight yarn, and that is what I had in my stash. I had a sweater quantity. Um, this size called for nine skeins, and I had nine skeins. I purchased them to make a cable knit pullover, but I, because I was pregnant and I wasn't sure how things would turn out postpartum, I was a little bit apprehensive to knit anything so intensive as like a cable knit pullover that I might not get to wear for a while, which I'm kind of regretting because I actually um, am thankful to already fit back in all of my clothing. <laughs> And so I could have totally made, I could have made that pullover and had that ready to go to wear this winter. So yeah, I'm a little disappointed I didn't since that was my goal and kind of like my dream and that was the whole reason why I bought the yarn, but I talked myself out of it. And um, so now I'm kind of, I'm happy with this cardigan. It is beautiful, but it's not what I was wanting. And um, yeah, time will tell, blocking will tell how much I really love this this pattern. So uh, the pattern itself is lovely. My only um, sort of complaint with it is the back panel is um, a complete, it's completely uh, charted. You can see there's a pattern in there. Um, it's also written out, but point being, it's not just stockinette. There's, there's a pattern in there. It's like a chevron pattern. And the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter yarn, um, unfortunately, I think that pattern really gets lost in this this yarn. So I'm really hoping that in blocking it, it will open up all the stitches and kind of bring out all the, the detail and, and the work that went into this, this back panel. The pockets are also knit with that pattern. And see, it, it's just kind of getting lost. Um, you can see there's texture in there. And again, the lighting is probably obscuring it a little bit more, but um, yep, I think if this was like a really smooth yarn, that this uh, this pattern would look beautiful. And it does look beautiful. I'm thinking of this as like my grandpa card, my grandpa, grandpa cardigan, um, because of how rustic it is and the, uh, the pattern, the chevron I think it's even called wood stove is what she's calling this pattern. So anyway, <clears throat> while this is nearly done, it is kind of hard to show um, on camera. I am working on the second sleeve. So, oh, there you go. Now you can kind of see. Let me hold it this way. You're looking at the back. So I have one sleeve done. I've been weaving in ends slowly, um, and here I have a drop stitch that I realized I need to fix, um, which is unfortunate because I seamed the back panel to the front, and so I'm going to have to just kind of sew in the stitch somewhere and close it off, <laughs> but it's not in the shoulder seam. So, so yeah, I have one sleeve done. There's the back. I've got a collar. Um, it's flipped out. Is how she recommends doing it so she has you seam it so that you have an exposed seam on the wrong side of the fabric so that it's exposed when the collar is flipped out you can kind of see how it uh, turns in as you come down off the neckline so yeah um wow I am I'm getting to this stage where I don't know where I'm going with what I'm saying anymore so hopefully you're still with me this, so this I'll have done pretty quickly um, happy to get this done and yeah, there's, there's the pattern. So it's fairly long. It's not the longest cardigan ever. It will definitely lengthen as I block it. Um, and then the front, so it has this nice thick collar. And the pockets, so this is another uh, provisional cast on pattern and you can see my scrap yarn is still there. This is the last step sort of, so you, pick up and knit the back panel of that um, of the pocket and then you whip stitch it in underneath. So I'm excited because I've never done pockets before and um, it's actually quite simple at least in her pattern. So I'll have two pockets and that is awesome. So and then this is the folded out the full 
collar, and so it definitely looks better with the, yeah. Um, I'm not going to try it on, but I will definitely show it finished in my next episode. Right now, I don't uh, love the way that it fits. This is the small, and it's so it's the second size. I really wish I would have knit the first size. It there's a lot of positive ease in places that I I mean it's a cardigan, but if you look at her photo that hopefully I've already included a, a, an example of, she wears hers um, a lot closer with with less positive ease um, than this is coming out, and I like the way that it looks better like that. So anyway, we will see. Um, I am on my eighth skein, and this will definitely be enough for the sleeve. Um, I'll probably have to get into the ninth skein just to finish the pockets, but I might even have some leftovers. So, so yeah, that is the getaway cardigan by Alicia Plummer. And yeah, so now I'll have had uh, knit three cardigans this year, I think. I did my Be Thankful cardigan by Lily Kate France starting in November. I, I might have finished at the end of last year, but regardless, that's three cardigans in less than a, a year. So that's great because uh, cardigans can be daunting. Um, if you're wondering, this is not steaked or anything like that. It is actually knit um, back and forth. And so the, there's not a lot of seaming. There's a little bit of seaming where you join the front shoulder panels um, to the, the back shoulder panels and you bind off in the neck. So you, you are just left with the shoulder so then you, again, you seam them with your, with your needle bind off and you end up picking up for the, oh, so the collar was also fairly interesting. Um, you have the rib stitches going on the front panels, so you, you don't have to pick up for collar stitches, which is nice because you do have to pick up for the sleeve stitches and I don't love picking up stitches. Um, I can't. This this pattern, I feel like I did it pretty all right, but sometimes it doesn't look that great, um, which is why I, I like the provisional cast on now, and I totally see the benefit of that after knitting the Isabel and not having any, um, uh, yeah, I really like that. So with this, you actually knit the ribbing quite long, and you seam it, and then you have to uh, so you seam the two sides, the panels together for the collar, like we'll say this is a collar, and so you've got two flaps. <laughs> this is a great illustration. Then you seam those together and then you tack it down to the base of the, the back of the sweater. So that's how you attach it and you get that extra, excess fabric and that, um, you know, you understand what I'm saying. I don't understand what I'm saying. Let's move on. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my only work in progress because I have been knitting like a uh, just a ton and so everything is basically finished, but now I have a lot of yarn to show you for upcoming projects. So let me talk about that. <laughs> so first I will show you this really cool yarn that um, I've heard people talk about, but I've never seen in person. Um, I think this is awesome. This is, I'm going to say Shopel is the brand. I hope that you know what I'm referring to. And it's called Zauberball Crazy. And it is a sock yarn with a, kind of like the Yarn Hero yarn I showed. It looks, you know, like there's marling and um, so lots of really awesome, fun, plied uh, colors in here. And I will hopefully put the colorway name here on the screen. I have no idea how to say this, so forgive me. I don't want to attempt because it, I think it will come out um, offensively. <laughs> so, but uh, it's 100 grams. I believe it's 75-25 merino nylon. It's 75% uh, virgin wool is what it says, and it is uh, super wash um, and 25% nylon. So definitely a true sock weight. It's, uh, yes. And I'm pairing it with um, an undyed 75-25 merino nylon sock from my shop. And uh, so I will have these two together for a color work pair of socks. I should have already said this by now, but mom, if you are watching, <laughs> stop watching. 
because this is a gift knit and I've already said too much so turn this off or skip ahead um, but if you're not my mom most of you aren't <laughs> I am making a color work pair of socks for her so I'm making the water for the elephants pattern which I, I will try to put in a picture and um, I was going to mimic the same colorways that are in the sample knit from the designer but as I was looking through all of the many many projects a ton of people used this combination and I thought it was so cool um, that I just had to do it. So I'm mimicking whoever whoever started the trend of using this colorway with this sock um, and the many, many people who have done it since, I'm joining all of those people and I'm making that pair of socks. So my mom's favorite animal is an elephant and uh, she loves them very, very much. And this pattern is just stunning and um, it has her name all over it, so I'm happy to make this for her. She's, um, my grandmother recently uh, died and that was her mom, and so this is kind of like a, a just a gift to give her a pick-me-up, plus I've never knit her anything, so hopefully she will enjoy this. So that will be cast on um, here shortly, uh, if not maybe tomorrow. Um, I haven't done socks in a while. Uh, those green ones I did some time ago, and. So I'm excited to do this. I love color work. So yes. Okay. So that's that. And now I have a lot of yarn to show you from Lamb Strings, who I talked about earlier with this um, love note. So Lamb Strings is pretty much the only indie yarn dyer I have purchased yarn from because being a dyer, it's definitely, um, you know, I dye, I dye my yarn that I'm going to use often just for cost sake for me and because you know if I want a particular color I can make it or perhaps I'm using like a sample or like a practice skein for my knitting so I don't usually buy other people's hand dyed yarn. I, I will buy things like Yarn Story and Brooklyn Tweed and um, you know obviously different yarns but anyway point that I'm trying to make is I love her yarn so much that I kind of went crazy and have two upcoming projects in her yarn. So let me show you those yarns. So I purchased two different weights uh, per yarn. This was two separate orders. Originally I was going to do one project and then I decided to do two projects. Um, so I did a DK weight order and a fingering weight order. So I'll show you the fingering weight first. Um, I want to knit the What the Fade by Andrea Maori, and that is her triangle shaped brioche fade shawl pattern. Um, I'm really excited to knit that one because I've only knit brioche one time and that was in my Stephen West MCAL from last year and that was the shawlography. Um, so that was the one and only time I've knit brioche and I did make a mistake or two with that but I think this time around I'll, I'll be more patient since I'm not going with the mystery knit along, the, you know, the weekly clues and um, so yeah, I'll be more patient with myself and make sure that I do it correctly and um, I'm really excited because brioche is a lot of fun. So. I think it'll be fun to combine that with some beautiful yarn and a fade and just, I'm really looking forward to it. But, um, so when I did go to India Untangled last year and Brian Beck, on the way home, we drove the whole trip. On the way home, we stopped in Charlotte, North Carolina and I went to Charlotte Yarn and I bought La Bien um two skeins of, of her yarn. So this is, this is sock weight yarn. It's fingering 75-25 and the colorways are Tangiopia and I think Cassiopeia. Oh, Fiori. Um, so I got these to do something together with them um, and then I decided these would be excellent for a fade. So I was trying to purchase three additional skeins or, or four, four. I think what the fade calls for six different colors. Um, or she recommends using six, so I'm going to use six. So I purchased five, and I had two, and because I couldn't see them in person, I, I wanted to make sure that I got, um, that I had maybe an option in case there wasn't enough contrast in some of the skeins to pair with these. So I'm still deciding on what to to do as far as the, the fade goes. Some of these don't have quite as much contrast, like these two look fairly identical. See, I'm dropping everything. <laughs> I 
So these two skeins look very similar. Um, definitely on camera, a little less so in person. This one's darker. Um, so I don't think I'll use both of these because there wouldn't really be a lot of contrast, but again, I'm still deciding. So this is, and this base is her Trollo La Sock, which again is the 75-25 Merino Nylon. This is the Nocturnal colorway. Um, it's really beautiful. She's got some wonderful color descriptions on her website, so if you want to go to her website just to read more about the colors, um, you could do so, so that I don't sit here and bore you with trying to describe something that you can probably see, but if you want something more accurate, perhaps go to her website is the only point I'm trying to make. So this is Nocturnal. <laughs> really gorgeous. I will likely use this one in there because it's the deepest shade that I have, so it'll it'll kind of finish out nicely. Um, the next one, this other color is Nettle, and yeah, so up close you can, you can see the differences, hopefully there. Um, and I really, really love both of these, but again, I don't think I'll use both, so we shall see. So then I have Victorian a beautiful mauve shade with kind of some pumpkin orange speckles and some brown speckles. So this one, again, may or may not end up in there. Still haven't decided. This colorway is Summer Goth, and uh, this will definitely be in there. I think I need to turn the lights down so you can see better. Yeah, so that one is Summer Goth. Very beautiful. Um, probably the most, one of the more speckled ones out of everything I got. And then this one is Sugar and Spice. So this one will definitely be in there too. This will be my starting color since it's my lightest. And uh, like it's actually, it's mostly undyed, maybe a little bit of uh, like a gray. Yeah. This will be my, my initial color. And then I'll go to this Lobby in a May. I think they're just different enough that you'll be able to see the transition and then so maybe you guys can help me decide here what to do then I think I'll go into this other one Tangiopia by Lobby and May. I definitely want to keep these two together because they share some of the same elements um, so I think that'll make for a nice fade and then I'm thinking I will go to this blue because I think the blue will look really nice next to the orange. Um, so that might be my first four. Let's see if I can keep this up. And then I could do something like Victorian and then Nocturnal. So that's an option. Or I could do... Uh, nettle and nocturnal so there wouldn't be quite as much contrast so maybe something more like this one or i could put this one oh goodness over here and do this and keep kind of these cooler shades at the end yeah i can't hold them anymore let me know what you think but uh flame string yarns i really love uh, lamb strings yarn. Very beautiful. So the last bit that I got from them is DK weight and I got a sweater quantity. I am really excited about this. So I am going to be knitting the cottage sweater, a cottage swancho by uh, Handmade Closet and she has a couple of swancho patterns. She has one called Herbalist which I was going to knit but I decided to do cottage this time. It's a beautiful, hopefully there's been a picture, a beautiful color work swancho. So lots of positive ease with like a, definitely the drapey sort of bat wing, um, like dolman style here. Again, it's like a poncho. So I'm sure you can picture it. But I'm going to knit something similar to what she did for her sample. So my base, the, the main color, is going to be this one, which my goodness is so beautiful, so beautiful. Again, this is lamb strings. Um, this was the colorway that sold me on going with her for this project because I really wanted to use this one. So then I picked all of the other colors to go around this. And um, this one is called Apothecary. Uh, yes, one of the most beautiful yarns I have ever seen in my life. 
cannot wait to wind these up and cast on my project. And I feel like now that I've shown you the yarn, I can, I can start. So that'll be my main color. And then I did the same thing with this one as I did with the other. And I think that's the downside of purchasing yarn online. Um, I wasn't quite sure what would have enough contrast with these. So I purchased uh, four skeins. You only need one skein, I think for all sizes, but I know for at least my size, which will be the, the smallest size. I think the pattern is in three sizes because there's so much ease. Um, you can kind of tailor it to what you need. It's like a small, medium, medium, large, and a large, extra large, I believe. But again, there's as far as the actual inches in the pattern or centimeters, there's quite a lot of variety. So even if you don't think you fit into one of those categories necessarily based on conventional sizing standards, check the inches and the, the actual schematic because you might find that one of those will work for you if, if you don't feel like you fall into the, that range somewhere. Anyway, point point is I purchased four additional skeins of yarn to go with these. Um, so four different colors and I have to pick three, which is really hard. <laughs> so I want to show you with Apothecary so you can kind of get an impression of what I'm going for. And I did get similar colors to her sample knit. Um, so I could do, I could do essentially the same sweater, but um, I think my colors have a little bit more depth to them than the ones. So there'll be probably a little bit more variation and um, color intrigue. I think hers are more tonal, so, but it's similar. So again, main color. Then I got, this is Camp Crystal Lake. This one is uh, Victorian, which I also got on the sock. Um, so I got it on the DK and you can definitely see that the shade that is, is deeper on DK and that's because different bases take dye differently. So the nylon content in the, in the sock base definitely changes the way, like the depth of, of shade for that base. So anyway, you can kind of see the contrast for sure. Victorian is lighter on sock and deeper on DK. Then I got, I think this was Petunia. Yeah, Petunia. It's it's more pink than this, than you're seeing here. Um, the the base, I would say, is like a pink, pink and cream with lots of beautiful speckles. This is mostly, I think, like the, the point is the speckles. <laughs> and this is Lacewing, which, yeah, super stunning. So I'm picking three of these to go with Apothecary. And originally, I think my thought process was this, but I did, this was kind of my wild card purchase because I was thinking we might need some really light colorway to provide more contrast in the color work. And I think this is what I've settled on because Apothecary and Victorian side by side, they do look like they contrast here, but I sort of worry that this color will get lost in between the sections where it is side by side with Apothecary. Her sample knit used a shade similar to this, I believe. Um, I think her sample knit, the closest option that I have in front of me is something like this. So that would work, but I do really love this. <laughs> so let me know what you think. I, I'm really curious and I would like some feedback on which ones to use. So there's a couple combinations I could do. There's that one. And I'm not necessarily holding these up in the order that I would knit them in, but yeah, just to get an idea of these together. So I could do that. I could do that one. We could do this. Yeah, let me know what you think. So lots of beautiful, amazing yarn. This will keep me busy for a while. Um, really happy to have gotten some lambstring, especially since I won't get to go to Rhinebeck this year. 
and I don't know the next time I'll be at a fiber festival, so picking out yarn in person isn't going to be happening a lot. Um, so yes. I think that's it for all of the fiber. I, I thought this would take me, oh, no, I have one more thing to show you. This is not something I made, this was a gift I received. And Tammy, if you're watching this, thank you so, so much for this stunning gift. So my friend Tammy, who comes to my weekly knit nights, she crocheted me a, a gorgeous baby blanket for my daughter. Um, I just can't get over how incredible this stitch is. This, I mean, this is really so special. She used the Kremka Reborn wool that I sell in my shop, and she used two colorways, so she used this lightest pink with, and the, the contrast is a red. Um, very, it's sort of like a speckled color. This is, again, another Kremka wool, and uh, this one's really nice because it is made out of recycled and uh, reclaimed materials, so it is a blend of mostly wool, I think 65% wool, and then a certain percentage each of recycled, um, I think nylon and one other synthetic, but they're, they're sort of rescued and salvaged from materials and fabric that would have been otherwise disposed of. So it's a really great blend of, of fibers and it's a worsted weight. Um, it has a really nice drape though. This is, she blocked it. Um, I think she did kind of like a light blocking, maybe like misting it, I think she said. Um, but yeah, so it, it definitely blocked out really well. This is a very, very nice, very special blanket. I'm so excited for my daughter to get to appreciate this and have this and um, just really love this so much and so grateful. So thank you, Tammy. I had a lot of friends give me some gorgeous handmade gifts and I forgot to bring them all with me today, so hopefully I'll show the rest next time. Um, but this is definitely one of my favorites. It's so beautiful. I love this scalloped border that she put on there. She said it was very simple. Um, again, this this crochet stitch, I had never seen this before, at least not in person, and I don't think at all otherwise. And it is just beautiful. So, yes. <laughs> okay, now that is all of the... Um, fiber things I will talk about today, all of the yarn, all of the knitting. Um, don't want to keep you here forever unless maybe you missed me. I hope you missed me. <laughs> I know I always miss my, my, you know, my podcast friends, the people who I watch when they are gone for a while. So hopefully I um, maybe was missed by at least one of you. That makes me feel good because I have such a great um, friendship with so many of you. So yeah, if you're still here, um, I don't have much else to say. I definitely appreciate you watching. I guess I can talk a little bit about my life, a little bit. I, I try not to do it too, too much, but um, yeah, if, if you're curious, I, as I said, I just had a baby a couple weeks ago. Her name is Ara, and she's the love of my life. <laughs> I adore this baby so much. She's everything I, I could have hoped for. Um, if you've been watching, uh, I actually last year and, um, you know, if, if this is difficult for you, I totally understand, but I last July actually had a miscarriage, um, at 12 weeks. And so this baby is, you know, even more special to me. And, um, yeah, the fact that she came in July, I think is really sweet and serendipitous and, um, Yes, I just love her so much. This is the longest I've been away from her, and it's it does not feel good. Um, I'm ready to get home, but I'm trying to wrap all this up because it's been so long. And yes, um, so the my my birth with her, the labor was intense. Um, I was in labor for over 30 hours. At least the contraction started um, in an evening, and then they lasted all night long. I didn't sleep a wink. And uh, then the next morning, I, I I was trying to hold off going to the hospital as long as possible because I was so worried that I'd get there and they'd send me home. And um, I went about seven in the morning, eight in the morning, and that's what happened. They kept me for a couple hours. Everything was progressing, but for whatever reason, they sent me home 
and um, about four o'clock that same day, I could not handle it anymore. My hospital, the hospital that I prefer, is kind of a drive away from me, so I was worried about if I wait any longer, I will not be able to make it. So um, I told my husband, we have to go back, and thankfully my mom was there too. She was, she drove up to be there for my animals and to support me, and so glad to have her there. Um, so I drove back to the hospital around 4 or 4.30, and um, they all said, we knew you'd be back. <laughs> and so yeah, I was, I was actually in labor, and um, it took all night. My daughter was born at 2.41 in the morning, um, still hadn't slept at all, and I did it unmedicated, so I was in a pretty substantial amount of pain, but manageable looking back on it. I mean, I did. I managed it with deep breathing, and I just was silent. I had my eyes closed for hours. <laughs> I didn't talk to anybody. Um, I just dealt with it until it was time, and yeah. Um, I am so thankful to have had such an amazing team of nurses and doctors because I've heard lots of, um, and maybe you are somebody who has experienced, definitely there are some, some birth stories out there that are way less positive of an experience than, than mine was. So I'm very grateful for the team that I had. And if I ever have another one, I'm definitely going to go back and yep. Yeah. So that, that's pretty great. Um, uh, I've been enjoying just walking around outside in my garden with my daughter. If you've seen my garden, um, it's something that I have looked forward to sharing with her for, you know, I've just been dreaming about it the whole time I was pregnant with her. I just couldn't wait. And, you know, she's still only two and a half weeks old, so she doesn't, I'm sure, fully understand what we're doing, but it's special to me to get to walk around with her in the garden. And today it's raining quite a lot, so that's not on the agenda, but um, I have enjoyed sitting outside with her and just holding her and um, walking her around and showing her all the flowers and silly things like that. So I'm looking forward to sharing that more with her over the years and um, I, I want to maybe start a whole separate children's, like a her garden that she can choose what is planted and if she wants to grow, because we also grow our own food and whatnot, if she wants to grow some food in there, she can pick some of that to do. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing like, not that the whole garden won't be hands-on, but just a special place for her where she gets all the say and she can plant it and um, do whatever she wants. So yes, lots, lots to look forward to. Okay guys, I am gonna go now to a local chocolatier, which is such a cool profession who apparently makes some vegan chocolates and I'm going to get some special stuff for my husband and maybe pick up some plants from the local nursery um, as a surprise for him and then get home and spend time with him. Um, we'll probably play Mario Party or something because he likes that very much. Um, okay, so thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll be back soon. Hopefully we won't have to wait. I, I won't wait. Um, you know, even if nobody watched this or just one person watched this, it feels so nice to just have a place to talk about my knitting and my adventures and crafting. And so thank you just so much for all of you who do watch. This is such a small little channel in the grand scheme of, of YouTube and social media and, and what have you, but it's such a special place to me. And just the fact that there are as many of you who watch and interact with me as, as there are just, yes, just thank you because um, this is definitely, uh, it's the, I think the emotions, I'm getting sentimental, but this has just been such a beautiful experience for me to get to uh, do this, like this opportunity and to share this with you guys and to have so many people interact and appreciate and yeah. So thank you and I will talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you.